Welcome back to our Weekend Prime. And today on Health Digest, we had a special look at the separation of the conjoined twins that happened in Kenyatta last year. And helping uh, the doctors do the separation of these conjoined twins was a 3D model of their pelvis, which the doctors actually referred to back and forth that helped them uh, do the surgery in the quickest time, though it was 23 hours, but the surgery was successful. As we had earlier seen that the two girls now are happy, separate girls. And with us in studios are Dr. John Paul Ogallo and Dr. Alan Gray Mukuzi. And Dr. Ariz, what is the future like uh, for three-dimension printing, not only in Kenya, but worldwide? Because we know there are some countries that are actually doing uh, organ, they are printing organs like ears, for example, and transplanting them. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's true. That's the next exciting frontier about 3D printing is the actual printing of organs. And the concept is pretty much the same. The only difference is what is coming out of the printer. All right. And again, it's a very complex, complex scenario, and we still haven't quite gotten there, but massive strides are being made, and it's technology that will be with us in the next couple of years. Mm. So the question is, uh, how do we get to print uh, an organ, let's say an ear, that will actually look like my ear, that can actually pass for a natural ear? Well, if you use the air example, it's pretty simple. You have one on the other side that looks exactly the same. So we pretty much just take an image of that, put it through the same kind of software that we use, process it, and feed the information to the printer. And the printer comes out and gives you um, a biological or biocompatible material that looks exactly like the ear you have on the other side, mm. for example. OK. So are, are we likely to see printing of vital organs like kidneys, where you know there are a lot of demand for organ transplants? Yes, and that is the hope. And if that happens, then it completely changes the medical landscape quite significantly. That there are challenges in the little smaller intricacies that go into having a fully functional organ, mm -hmm. but there's massive research being done to try and fix out, fix those little mm -hmm. gaps in the whole process. Okay, uh, Dr. Mkuzi, we saw from the uh, 3D model of the twins' pelvis that we couldn't, uh, or rather you couldn't uh, print uh, intricate parts like the muscles and the blood vessels, you know, that could help. Uh, does this mean that we are still at baby steps towards uh, this technology? Yeah, quite honestly, we are still at the very um, beginning of this technology. But like I said, the, the future is very, very promising and actually very exciting. And the, the dream that we have actually in our minds is that you'll be able to walk into a supermarket, pick a kidney for yourself and go to the doctor and it's transplanted to you. That's where we are heading with this technology. And there are significant strides that we are making towards that, um, uh, that aspect. Mm. Yeah. But before we get there, what do we need to do R at the moment? Right now, we need to invest heavily in research and research and research and research and a lot of research. Uh, the universities should be investing into this research. Uh, health institutions and the Ministry of Health and the government as a, as a whole should be looking into investing into this because it has very big impl implications in health in general. Okay. So as we wind up, are doctors, uh, fellow doctors and medical uh, institutions embracing this uh, 3D printing in, in Africa and in Kenya particularly? I would say yes. Um, yes and no. Yes, because we have quite a, people, uh, quite a number of people that we've worked with. And uh, one such in incident is uh, that uh, uh, conjoined twins. Um, no, because as in health, people are always a bit skeptical and a bit slow to accept new technology because it's, all, it's not been tried and tested, okay? Understandably so. But uh, it is very promising. Um, being given a chance to work on the conjoined twins was a big b a breakthrough for the technology and us in general. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, he says that uh, people are slow to uh, accept new technology because it hasn't been tried and tested. So can we say that in this particular instance, this one example was a tried and tested module that other doctors can embrace? Yes, it, it definitely worked in this, in this particular case. But there has to be a whole shift in the way we look at 3D printing. It's been heralded as what they call as the fourth industrial revolution. And that is a very big tag to have on 3D printing. And that technology is going to break through in every single industry that we know today, including healthcare. Mm. 
So it has to be a shift in the whole thinking and the ability or the willingness to move to something that is new, innovative, and has unimaginable, you know, possibilities. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us this evening on Weekend Prime. That's it on Health Digest uh, this evening. Uh, we continue to follow up what 3D printing will do. And so I'll hand you back uh, to Sharon Momani to wind up the bulletin.